Hey guys, and welcome back to the Model Car Cup series. Well, the video I was trying to load on the 15th that showed some of the build process never would load even today. So, I just deleted that video and I still had a couple of video clips and some of the slides to show how we finished up our 70 Roadrunner. So, I just redoing it and we're going to share that with you now. So, let's get to it. What manufacturer had only one Cup Series victory? A. Studebaker B. Lincoln C. Nash Okay guys, if you remember on our trailer, we had to put this centerpiece in here and we've got everything mounted up. We also had to remove those bubble fender wells that come with this trailer. And we also moved the tires closer together. As you see here, we moved and this is in the last video I just want to do a quick review uh, moved everything forward butted up the leaf springs right to each other and then we had to replace the fenders with these and I want to show you real quick how I made these um, as you can see let's do a test fit here real quick as you can see going right down to the edge of the trailer I'm hoping you can see it right there. You got clearance, and then it's just a matter of shifting this back and forth to center it up. And then we'll mark that, and we'll get that glued in place. But how I made these was something simple. Um, first thing I did was determine how long this upper piece needed to be. So what I did was I took my ruler and actually let me get one out because you're not going to be able to see the numbers on the grids and from the front of the tire to the rear of the tire was right about two and a half inches and if I move this forward and where we're one and a half inches right between the tires that's going to give about a half an inch to fold to the center of the tire as you recall that's where this was. Oh, I got it resting on there right now, but you see what I'm saying. So we know about three inches, and you can always trim that off if that's too much. Now to get our bend, and we're gonna need a piece of just plain sheet plastic to transfer that over to, and this is 20 thousandths, by the way. But all I did to get our shape was, I took my hobby knife handle first, and simply, oh, I got the wrong, well, it doesn't really matter. And just roll this around until it touches the other side. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Now, it's going to spring back some, but I'm going to show you how we'll fix that too. And once again, center it up. And we're going to roll that right around until it touches again right there. We're going to release that. So you see we've got pretty much a good shape, but you see how this one has sprung back a little more? Well, I can do it again and again, but we want that to be a little more of a, a permanent bend. You already see this one's starting to spring back compared to this one. So how we're going to do that is we're going to just use a smaller diameter after we've got that first one there. Oops, that's more than the one. My putty handle is the one I use. This is a little bit smaller than the hobby knife. And we're going to roll that right around. I want to get our basic shape first until it touches once again. And you see how now that's folded in. But now as it comes out just a little bit, it's going to be more in that place. And again, this is just a three inch piece. And this is gonna spring back just a little bit more. And I want it to be just a little bit out. But as you can see, I can lay it right on top of that one and boom. 
So now we got another one. Now what we'll do is take that piece of sheet plastic and I'll hold this up to this one and as you see it's right to the shape again. And then we'll transfer and I use just a uh, artist pencil and then I'll transfer that over to that uh, sheet plastic. Draw that and that way when I glue it on I can cut it out Give it a good sanding, and there you go. That's all there is to it. Uh, all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, tires and wheels off. We're going to go ahead and get our uh, proper wheels painted, valve stems added, get everything prepped up, and we'll go ahead and get our fenders mounted. And as you can see from the top view here, when we get these on there, this is that proper look we'll get. And then, of course, we'll get our uh, trailer crank, too, there. But uh, looking good. We'll center everything up and get it glued up and get it primed, and we'll be back. So here's another look at our real trailer, the one we're replicating anyway. Uh, but these trailers got a lot of use, and here's another look of it being loaded up or unloaded, whichever way you want to look at it, off the trailer. And as you can see, on into the uh, 70s, here in 72, you see Baker's car being loaded up on what looks like pretty much the same trailer. And off to the right, you'll see uh, another trailer in the background over there. I guess that's for Richard's car and the two box trucks. Um, you notice the wheels have been changed from petty blue to white. Um, and here is a picture of the Dodge. I think it was an uh, L1000 um, box truck that they towed the cars with. And they had several of those. Kind of cool. And right here is our trailer in primer, and I set it out and started checking for any flaws, see if anything needed to be sanded uh, or cleaned up really good, and also to check the stance. Everything looked really good, had plenty of clearance. Uh, you see the steel wheels with the uh, white walls, and uh, it, overall it set really well. And here I did a mock-up. I kind of just set the body and chassis on it to kind of get an idea of the fit because it's in 24th and the car's in 20 or excuse me the car's in 24th and the trailer's in 25th but it's a pretty decent sized trailer and it fits really well um here is our steel wheels all painted in petty blue i weathered them with the tamiya panel liner as well as um, the Tamiya Weathering Master Set in about four different tones. Give it a little dirty look and uh, did a little bit of the white walls as well uh, before I put them on the, there. And here is our trailer totally finished. And I used the Tamiya Weathering uh, on the tread plate where the tires go up and down. Again, about four different uh colors on that some uh, rust some silver uh, I think one's called soot you see that in the center there where you might have some drips off the front of the engine after a race or something um, so it, it gives it a little bit of a worn look there not like it's just a brand new painted trailer so uh, I, I really like the way that turned out though okay guys so that's our trailer so let's get over and take a look at that interior work the seat I chose to use for this one is out of one of the monogram kits. It, it closer represents uh, what was run in the car back then. And as you see, this this is that monogram 124th, and it's just, you got a gap back here. It sits way too low. You got a big gap up here. So you see I've got some sheet plastic drying in there. And you notice I built some uh, risers. I did them one layer at a time just to kind of see where I could get that to. And the reason was this seat sat so low in this thing. If you'll see, it was it was really down. And it needs to be just under that bar right there. So I built it up for that. Because as you see here, the uh, headrests are these three bars right here. And... As you see, I have made these, let me take the camera down. 
I have made these three bars and they will be going, that's the headrest, and they'll be going um, right up through here. And I think this is going to look pretty good. So let me go ahead and get these in there. And oh, by the way, the uh, roll bars that will come down the A pillar and to the dash, I've already made those and they're a good, nice fit for there and I've made a couple of those so they're ready to go so let me get some of this done and maybe we get it back in primer and we'll let you take a look hey guys before we get back to that uh, interior pan I want to share a few other interior pieces that we were working on too and that is first off the dash uh, you remember we, we redid the dash quite a bit you see here where I added a little bit to the steering column uh, based on where the seat was going to sit, it was just too far away, very unrealistic. And if as you recall, the equipment blue or the darker blue you see here, the steering column in uh, the that's actually a Superbird uh, at the museum. And you see, we did that here. And steering wheel wise, I, I started to modify the, the kit in the kit steering wheel and no matter what I did it just didn't look right so I decided to just go with uh, I had one of the old MPC kits out of out of a glue bomb so I decided to use it and uh, next up was the rearview mirror if you remember it had the uh, bracket that had the two little holes in it there and um, so we had uh, scratch built. I showed you how we scratch built that. Well, here it is primed and painted and ready to go in the car. Now, the seat we were talking about. You know, I had done a lot of modifying, and here I've got it clamped up while it was drying. And I started while that was drying looking at the seat from one of the Salvino um, Monte Carlos. And as you see here, it sits a little higher on its own. So I went ahead and painted them both up, but I really fell in love with that uh, kit out of the Salvino uh, Monte Carlo as you see here painted up it really really looked good and by the way those seat belts are decals those are from Gopher Racing and before you say anything about blue well check this out there's your seat and there's your blue belts um, so I went ahead and, and went with those and here it is sitting in the interior um, and primer just one and you and you know that it goes right up to that bar where we built the uh, bottom shim the bottom up on the other seat right up to the uh, headrests there and the seat will be sitting a little forward than that and then there it is with the seat belts let me tell you about these seat belts they come in two pieces and i cut them into five and then laid them over the raised uh, seat belts that's molded into the seat and it gave them a great kind of a three-dimensional look uh, then dull coated the seat and I think that turned out really nice moving on to the body uh, well not the body but the rest of the roll bars uh, you see here again the headrests and then the a pillar bars that are going to go down to the uh, dash and I always make those longer uh, so I can cut them to fit once I get them in there Here's a look at the uh, the back panel. You see the small pieces that have been welded in that are just braces. And next up, you see the uh, headrest here again. And here it is installed. And I've got the small bars uh, that go uh, horizontal. Horizontal. And then there's a rear look. The entire chassis pan in primer. And here is the shock access bays. And to make those, I just took a Coke can uh, that I'd flattened out. And you see I have uh, measured out and cut those to size. Uh, I rounded the edges a little bit and uh, with just... Uh, my file, jeweler's file, 
and here's a look at the interior after the uh, access bay panels have been installed and you see the uh, the padding on the headrest and the driver's side bar there here you know what let me show you how I make those and what I use as the material for the padding okay guys so how I make roll bar padding is I use heat shrink and I know a lot of other guys do too it has a rubbery kind of realistic feel to it and um, for my roll bars, as you remember in the other videos, I typically use 80 thousandths, which is Evergreen number 212. And um, what I do is take a piece of aluminum, and I would shrink this on the plastic, but of course the plastic will melt. So I use a piece of 62 thousandths aluminum tube and my trusty Harbor Freight, to kick the safety off of it, torch. And as you see, this heat shrink is huge compared to this. But once we get it down, talk among yourself, there you go. As you see, it's coming right down, snugging right up on that rod. And be careful right here too, guys, because you can get this to the, it will burn, you, will, you can melt it. The great thing too about this aluminum, with all that heat, well, I guess I shouldn't have grabbed right there because that end's pretty hot. But uh, it does dissipate really quick. See, I can hold it already. Um, let's get it a little bit tighter. I shouldn't have stopped because sometimes it'll start to harden up there a little bit. There we go. I think when I stopped, I should have kept going there a little bit. But you see, it's, uh, it's pretty snugly around that. So we'll take this off, and what I'll do is we'll take that roll, those roll bars and we'll take our Murphy's Rule and we'll measure how far they need to be, and then we'll cut them to those lengths. Now, typically what I'll do, though, is I'll put this back on here because the real roll bars, the padding is either, it's got a split in the back and it's either wrapped around and glued on or strapped on, so whichever way. And I'm gonna see if I can do this while I have it on the bar here. And I've got the Murphy's Rule propped up on that and I'm just gonna use the rod itself, the aluminum tube, excuse me, to act as the, uh, there we go. I think it's all the way through. Yeah, it is. There we go. So when we put this back on our larger piece, let me grab this piece of aluminum here. But as you can see, well, let me cut a piece off here. Oops. That always happens except in rehearsal. And with that split in it, if you can still slip it over, but you see the little uh, gap there in it. And this is bigger than our 80 thousandths, which let me grab a piece of 80 here, our roll, roll bar size. But if you have it already on the car, so you can slide that down on it and it's on there. But if it's already glued into place, that split will allow you to, well, let's see if I can see the split. There we go. It'll allow you to press it on like so there you go and you could put a little piece of glue or if you can slide it a little bit put a piece of glue um, and then just ease it back over it and you can open that gap anymore if you want to that's the way I do it that's the way we're going to do the headrest and the sidebar uh, at the window so let's get back over to it Here's a view from the back of the interior. You see the uh, headrest padding is already in there. You get a better look at the access panels back there. The ignition down there in the floor. Um, and then here's the front view again. And you notice those aluminum panels on the sides of the, the door cards there. As you remember from the uh, previous pictures and the other videos, the uh, side roll bars are behind that piece of aluminum. 
Now moving over to the chassis, this car is going to be a curbside, so you will not see underneath it, but I did want to keep it pretty accurate. You notice the equipment blue on where, normally that's a K member, but that's modified. And if you remember, we did that, and it is, uh, or the rear end and leaf springs are the equipment blue as well as the drive shaft. And um, here's a look at our modified K member from the front to get that closer accuracy wise and here's the chassis uh, the only thing left to put on here would be the pipes uh, and there'll be a, a dual pipes that dump out the driver's side right just behind the door but again this is not going to be seen but I want it to be close to accurate moving over to the body here you get a look at those uh, roll bars that are the, at the A pillars. And guys, let you in on a little secret. These are actually not mounted to the uh, interior. They're mounted to the body. That's why I remember I made them long. And they are actually made long for that reason I was talking about, so you could fit it better. But these are glued to the body. Uh, that way when I paint the body, everything gets painted all at once. And then I can move this. Let's see, here's a look at the, this is looking through the windshield at the passenger side. You see how it goes just beside it. Well, there is a flange just to the back of that 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 attaches to on that uh, hoop that's right up against the roof. And here is a look at the driver's side. You see how that just runs right up to it. And the windshield fits in there very flush, very nice. Um, I like the way this turned out. I really do. Moving over to the bumper and grill. Uh, you remember we took out our uh, punch and we punched down a couple different size holes out of our old Coke can. And then we took the discs. And by the way, the bumpers are done in all clad chrome. And kind of hard to tell here, but uh, anyway, and then we took our aluminum uh, discs and covered those over the uh, backup lights for the rear that you see here, and the same thing with the front bumper with the turn signals. And then uh, the grill, you remember we modified that, we cut it out, and we used a, our standard hole punch to make the headlight covers. And then we use the model car garage fine mesh wire to make, and as you can see, you can see through the, uh, the mesh. And uh, we have the one on the right that allows air to go into the oil cooler and then the, the main grill. And it was just shot in uh, Tamiya semi-gloss black and then... Uh, using a silver Sharpie around the edge. And if you want to go back and look at how we did a lot of that stuff, uh, you can go back to, I think it was part, uh, I think it was part three. It might've been part four and you can get caught up on that. Next up was the body. We got it uh, primed, water sanded, and then we got our main color, which is Model Car World Finishes number 2010 Super Blue, uh, which is Petty Blue. And as I showed you in one of the other videos, too, you, it's an exact match to the can I got from Pity Enterprises. And after we got a little uh, water sand and polished that out with Novus Number 2, got a great mirror-like finish. Almost, I didn't want to get too carried away like it was a, a show car, but I did want a good smooth finish. And after we got that done, we took the uh, power slide decals from Mike's Decals and uh, started decaling it up. And let me tell you, these decals are absolutely fantastic. They're very opaque. Um, as you can see, the maiden level cross, there's tons of tiny, tiny Petty Enterprise decals, all kinds of stuff that really stand out. Um, they're very opaque, as I was saying. There's no need for a lot of times with different decals, especially some of the older ones, you've got to double them to get them the color from bleeding through or anything well these you did not have to worry about that in the least bit uh i'm thinking about going back here as you see in some of these still pictures 
and doing some weathering, giving it a little uh, track smut, so to speak. But I don't know if I'm going to do that yet or not either. Um, well, stick around, guys. I'm going to put this on a turntable, and I'll show you a few other things. If you answered C, Nash, to the trivia question, you're right. Grab a cookie. Okay, guys. Well, here it is. Our finished up 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner by Petty Enterprises. The Plymouth by Petty. And she's all loaded up on the trailer and ready to head to the track. Uh, this was a really fun build. Uh, everybody in the Unified Scale Automotive Content Creators Group, thank you so much for the little extra time after my injury. Uh, to get it wrapped up and uh, I've been looking at uh, some of you guys builds already and uh, the ones that were done really early Fantastic stuff some great ideas and great inspiration there. Well, let me tell you a little bit about this We've got all our window trim in uh, you see here up close the grill work and I was really pleased with the way that turned out and let me tell you this little mirror as you see in the real car here and here's ours uh, that really turned out well. And you know, I was mentioning the door panels uh, earlier, the, the sheet aluminum that covers the uh, sidebars. Well, here's some pictures of the real cars and uh, the side panels in ours. And here's a look from the rear where you can see that fuel cell sticking out down there on the bottom a little bit. You know, the trailer I think was a really uh, nice addition to this one. Um, this has been just fun all the way through the trailer, the car, the whole nine yards. You'll notice that the back straps on the windows aren't on there. And I am just noticing that I've got those cut out of a piece of, um, a lasagna pan bottom. I cut a couple of thin strips and, uh, got them to length and I'm looking around the table here to see if I can find them, show them to you. Bear with me here a second. Uh, I don't know where I put them. Well, anyway, that's how organized I am this morning. Um, but uh, I'll get those back straps on the back windows and the gas cap, which is red, as you see in this picture. And by the way, in this picture, you also see the decal configuration that I used for this particular car. And the, But the gas cap, the red gas cap, the paint is drying on it. Um, and then I'll have a little lanyard that runs around to that too. And you also see, let me get up close here a minute, the uh, fuel overflow. Well, I'm getting too close there. The fuel overflow uh, spout. And let's see if I can get up here where you can see in a little bit. I know the car's moving, so I think we'll just use the stills on that. But overall, I'm pretty pleased. Uh, I'm sure you guys remember that my favorite of the Petty cars is this one, the 70 Short Nose uh, Short Track car and the 71 Plymouth. Uh, those are my all-time favorites. And I just love this one. And it's I've already got a spot for it. As you see, there's the case for it right there. <laughs> I've already got that set up. Uh, and when I get the gas cap and it, well, I'll put it in there until I get that stuff dried up. But uh, this has been fun once again. I uh, look forward to whoever it is next year and whatever they choose, uh, jumping in and uh, getting involved in that as well. Time to move on to some other projects and let's go have some fun with them. Guys, thank you so much for your support, uh, your concerns uh, when I was hurt. I'm glad uh, that I was able to get this one finished. Well, guys, God bless. And we will see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.